In this video, I will be walking through a complete before and after of how I designed my brother's basement in SketchUp. And SketchUp is a free to use CAD tool that has absolutely taken my DIY interior design skills to the next level. It's great for modeling floor plan changes, envisioning new designs, and communicating my plans to other people. We are going to walk through everything from taking dimensions and building the basic shape of the room, to assigning different functions to different areas, building out furniture, and also assigning materials. So whether you're curious about 3D modeling and just diving in for the first time, or whether you already have experience in CAD tools and are looking to pick up a few new tricks, this video is for you. And at the end, if you're still looking for some information on SketchUp and you're ready to take the next step, make sure you check out part one of this series where I showed all the tools I used in detail. Otherwise, let's get right into it. So my brother moved into a new house a year ago and so far the basement has gone underutilized. He and his girlfriend have ideas about how they want to use this space, but they needed a little help putting it all together, creating the vision that could help them really step forward. It's a good space to work with. You can see there's stairs coming from a split level above, and it's a fairly big square size. There's a pillar here and maybe some odd angles in the back, plus a door to the laundry room, but that's all stuff that we can work with. And the first step in the process is to understand space planning. So to do that, we need to know the purpose of the room. We settled on three things. They wanted a space for lounging and watching TV. They wanted a table to be able to play board games with friends. And finally, my brother wanted to use this back nook for a desk for his 3D printing. Once we understand the function of the room, we can start to plan out where each of those activities will take place. In this space though, the flow felt pretty natural. We wanted to have the focal point be the TV on the wall. So as you walk down the stairs, your eyes drawn to that direction, the couch will be right around the TV, and then behind that will be the table and chairs. And this creates a nice setup for hosting. The sight lines are there to help keep everybody together. It's cohesive in a way. So we took some measurements of this room. You can see from the diagram here, it doesn't have to be complicated. And then it was time to head over to SketchUp. The first step is to map out the perimeter of the room using the dimensions you just took. And you'll probably find that you're off by a quarter inch here or there. And for an exercise like this, I find that doesn't really matter. I just try to get the longest lines right and everything else is just measurement error. And once I'm done with that, I like to add dimension to my walls. So here I've added a four and a half inch depth to each one and trace that in to create a surface. I've also gone ahead and cut out both doors and I'm just gonna leave those as open spaces. The next step is starting to map out some furniture. So this either means taking the dimensions of furniture that already exists, or in this case, we're looking for standard measurements online. And I'm going for a mock-up here, so I'm not specifying which rug exactly I want, but I am trying to make it in realistic proportions to what you could actually buy. So for example, I know that a standard rug size is eight by 10, and that's what I'm gonna put in here. And then I'm gonna start to build out this couch, which is a chaise lounge with three seats. And honestly, what I did here was pull up one of the couches I would like to buy. Um, you could honestly pick anything from any store, as long as it's kind of in the right size and shape to what you're looking for. And again, we're trying to make something that is clearly a couch, but you don't need to go into extreme detail. We're going for a conceptual visualization of the room. And that means there's some leeway here on precision. The other thing I'm doing is trying to give some adequate spacing. So you can see that the rug is about six inches pushed away from the wall, which is nice. I've also placed the couch centered on the rug and pushed back so just the front legs are on top of the rug. These are all standard conventions that you can look up online and they're just making sure that when this comes together in real life, it's spaced appropriately. Now that I have the couch set up, I can start to look at what kind of gaming table would fit behind it. 
My brother wants to be able to have four to six people on a rectangular table, so I'm going to have to see what kind of standard sizes are available for that. And then I also want enough room for these chairs, for people to sit comfortably in it, as well as to be able to navigate around the table when other people are sitting down. And honestly, this took a while. In the beginning, I really wanted to have some bookshelves on the end to be able to store different board games or books. That really wasn't working out. There wasn't enough space for people to sit at the end and walk around. But that's the power of this measurement and guide tool. It really helps you sketch out your ideas and constraints, and things either fit together or they don't. And in this case, I decided the bookshelves weren't meant to be, and I removed them from this area. Once I had the placement right, it was time to go window shopping just like the couch. And I actually found this cool Dungeons and Dragons table that I thought would be the ideal table for my brother. And I based the dimensions in here on that. Again, we're going for a conceptual visualization. So the total size and placement and dimensions are important here, but we really don't need the detail. We just want it to be recognizable as a table. I took the time to cut out legs on the table just by cutting a little rectangle and extruding that through, but honestly, totally optional. You don't really need that to understand what this is. The same thing could be said for the chairs too. I could have taken a lot of time to design out chairs exactly how I'd want them to be, or another option is to download um, a pre-made CAD file of a chair, but instead I just made these basic circles where I wanted chairs to go and extruded them up just like little stools. And whether my brother will have stools, I doubt it, but this again gives the understanding that this is where somebody sits, and that's all we really need here. And while I was doing that, I was thinking that this corner here might be a great spot for the bookshelves. It's kind of tucked away, it's a bit in the walking path, and there's not a lot of other use that you could have here. So I just went ahead and threw those in for now. I'm also cleaning up a lot of my symmetry lines and measurement lines as I go along. Kind of once I'm done with any project, I like to delete those out and make some space and clarity for something new. A lot of the times too, when you have placed furniture, it's easy to get those lines back if you need them. And I had some fun building out this bookshelf with some symmetry. I was kind of thinking to myself how you would go about building something like this or dimensioning it. It's kind of fun with a bookshelf like this because you can actually build it yourself or you could go to Ikea and grab something similar as well. But I had some fun thinking about custom shapes and, and what it would look like and how you'd build that kind of thing. All right, our room is definitely coming together and starting to make a lot of sense. I'm gonna jump over to the TV area again and start building out a TV console. Now, I don't really know what kind of plans they have for storing a TV. It could just be wall mounted. Maybe they already have furniture like this. So I just built out something simple in the standard shape and standard size. And that seemed to work just fine. You can see I'm adding some cabinets on the front as well as going around and cutting out again some of these legs. It is optional as I said before. I, I kind of like doing it sometimes. It, it helps add the atmosphere to the room. I think legs also help pieces of furniture feel a little elevated and make the room feel more spacious. So little bits of detail here and there do help. Again, this could have just been one big rectangular box and it would have made sense that way too. It's kind of fun too, as my skills with SketchUp develop, I'm starting to make things a bit more detailed or find different ways of adding detail in a simplified way. So you can see rectangles really are your friend here in SketchUp. So if you find the right way to conceptualize a piece of furniture in rectangles, you can often add a lot of detail easily, if that makes sense. My brother made his girlfriend a blanket ladder a couple of years ago, so I wanted to show that here as well. I think it'd be a cute space to store some blankets. Um, so I, I designed it best as I could to what I could remember of how their blanket ladder looked. And this is a good example of strategic simplification. So I have two cylinders for the posts, but then I'm not going to worry about three-dimensional rungs. Instead, I'm just going to add these flat rectangles, and I think that's enough to get the message across. 
It was nice to add a little personalization here, you know, really thinking through what they have and how they would use the room it helps personalize something like this. All right, it's time to add in a TV and I chose to put a 65 inch TV on the wall, just a standard size. And if anybody is a TV nerd that's watching this, this is also a good way to try to find different viewing angles of your TV or viewing distances. I know based on different sizes of TVs, there's like a certain distance that is optimal to sit away or something. So it's kind of fun to place your couch and TV and be more intentional about what those distances are. And now that that's in place, I wanted to add a bit more visual balance to this living area. You can see that the blanket ladder on the left needs to be balanced by something of kind of equal size on the right hand side. My brother's girlfriend loves plants, so I wanted to put a potted plant here and I tried my best to start drawing it out, but it was going to be complicated. So I actually went into the catalog and started looking for a plant to add in. I didn't really like what I found, couldn't find the right thing. So <laughs> you're going to laugh at this. I went back and just tried to make like a two dimensional mock up again. This, is, <laughs> this turned out really funny. <laughs> So after I added a pot on the bottom and then a trunk sticking up, I went through this really roundabout way of basically making a Christmas tree shape, like a, a standard triangular tree, and then putting that into three dimensions. It's comical, but it goes back to the same point. Like you get the message across with something like this and that's all you need. And lastly, we're jumping over to this desk area. And this is such a great way to use a little corner like this. And one of the ideas I had was actually to get to filing cabinets or a similar type of storage situation, put it on either side and then just put a big slab of wood on top. I thought that would be a really easy way to build a custom desk in this corner and it wouldn't be hard, but it would also be nice and functional. So that's exactly what I sketched out here. I also went back to my little trick of building out a little circular stool for a seat and that worked well here as well. The last thing I wanted to do was add a few floating shelves above the desk. So I just measured up and then again put in kind of a standard uh, dimensional lumber size here. So not too hard. I put in two shelves there and that's a great symbolization of what it could be. Awesome, so we are basically done with this structure here. So I'm gonna clean up everything and then extrude my walls and my post up to eight feet. The next thing I really wanna do to bring this all together is start working on some materials. So you can see I'm just going through the catalog. It's not a hugely extensive catalog, but I'm just gonna pick out some colors and some textures to start applying to the different pieces of furniture. And this really brings it to life. You can see I've thrown on a dark wood floor, which is what they already have, going to the blanket ladder, and just starting to give life to some of these pieces. And this is an area where your style choices start to make more of an impact. So my brother really loves wood and they also love color in their house, darker, moodier colors like blues and greens. So that's what I'm gonna start to put in. If you have any kind of mood board or style choice, you can make good decisions here about what you'd want those to be. But for now, I just wanna give them a visualization of what could be. Going through and picking paint colors or anything like that, it's almost a different exercise and something that a CAD tool like this can really help you do. It's really easy to swap out these colors and textures and see what they would all look like together. Color theory and material choices are a whole nother big topic. But for now, I'm just going with my intuition and kind of playing around to see what looks nice. And before you know it, that's it. It's done. That's the entire floor plan complete with furniture, colors, everything. A perfect visualization of what their basement might one day be. And the next thing that I did was I actually filmed a little screen capture for my brother and my brother's girlfriend to look at. So you can see I'm just kind of panning around and, and showing them what these different areas are used for and kind of the intention behind my design. And this was a good way to do this for me. I actually was not in the same town as them, so this was a good way to communicate my design, show them everything I had thought of. And you can see really the, the space does come to life with all these different pieces of furniture in it, the different colors, the different textures. You can see the intention behind a lot of the things that I did and really get an understanding of how the space is going to be used. 
and they loved this visualization. They found it really useful and it helped give them direction for moving forward in the future. Seeing everything come together really helps you be able to take the next steps in a concrete way. The only feedback I got was about this chaise couch. My brother's girlfriend actually wanted to see what the space would look like with an L-shaped couch. So I made an alternate design and I'm going to show you how I did that now. I like to make design alternates inside the same file within SketchUp. So what I do is drag out a measurement guide about 20 feet away from the original room and then I copy and paste the entire room over, so making a duplicate here. And that's where I make all of my changes. And there are tools within SketchUp for grouping different objects together and making repetitive patterns and that kind of thing. And I probably would have been helpful if I did that for some of these couch parts, but it's okay right now. Um, basically what I'm going to do is slide this couch over and take down this right side so I can extend it into an L-shaped couch instead. So you can see here I'm moving the chaise to the other side, just making it symmetrical using those same lines of symmetry I had for the right side chaise, um, and then extending the couch out with the exact same dimension, seat dimensions I had prior. So I mean it takes a little bit of time and work, but this was kind of the benefit of using those standardized sizes like I said. I actually ended up pulling open uh, the website for the couch where I found this and opening up their model for uh, an L-shaped chaise instead, which was really helpful and helped me get these dimensions just right. And I realized I forgot to add a seat inside that main section, so then I just needed to slide the chaise over one and bump out that middle seat to make four across the back. So again, just playing around with what I thought was going to be the right kind of design, the right kind of fit in this room, until I was happy with what I was seeing. So once I've added that all back in and cleaned up my lines, gotten everything just the way I want it, I can go back and change out the materials and textures as well. So putting that carpet back together and assigning that same gray fabric look to all these different pieces of the couch. And there you have it. Now I have two rooms side by side in the exact same file that I can compare and contrast directly. Pretty cool, right? So that's the complete before and after transformation for you. I hope you found this video useful, interesting, entertaining. If you are interested in SketchUp and would maybe like to try this for your own house, I do have part one of this video series where I went through a complete beginner's take on SketchUp, all the tools you need to know to do exactly what I've done here. So make sure you check that video out too. If you like this style of content and you're interested in more interior design 101, leave me a comment down below with some video suggestions. There's so much to go through from function planning to design, materials, colors, all that stuff. Otherwise, I'll catch you in my next video.